Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Sarah from Entry. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're here to chat about your new album, Detriment. Super excited. Uh, Southern Lords, one of our favorite uh, labels. We cover all their stuff because it's almost always great. So anything that Greg and that label endorses, we are also it's usually right in our wheelhouse. So uh, super excited. Love the vibe. Love the songs. And so, um, you know, uh, got, got on my radar thanks to your awesome publicist. And I was like, oh, this is a band I definitely need to chat with and check out. So uh, great to meet you. And um, obviously this record is right around the corner coming out. So um, let's t hear about how you ended up signing with Southern Lord because I know uh, it's kind of a, an amalgam of personalities from the LA scene. Yeah, um, I think I guess we just somehow popped on Greg's radar at some point, and he ordered our record, which was pretty exciting because it's you know. <laughs> so that that's about it. We uh, ended up chatting a bit, and we played a few of the Power of the Rip shows, and pretty much just kind of came together organically. Nice, and then uh, I I think. Uh you guys have kind of built your reputation locally as well, just kind of hopping on shows and doing your own shows. Is that about right? Yeah. Um, we've, I mean, we've played all kinds of shows like this more, more or less. We play a lot of punk shows. We're more into the DIY kind of scene here, but uh, it's been awesome. We've met so many cool bands that maybe I wouldn't have even heard of before. So it's been, it's been great. And I only moved to LA in 20, the end of 2014, so it was really a good opportunity for me to meet other people as well. Playing in a band and then being in a scene will do that for you. You get to get a whole new world exposed to you. Um, that's awesome to hear. And uh, so how did the band kind of form? I'm interested to know how uh, you guys kind of got together and started. So Clayton, the guitar player, is actually my partner, but um, we he lived here. And I lived in Pittsburgh, and I had been in a couple kind of failed bands before I wouldn't say failed that's but just nothing that ever lasted so uh, I wanted to do something new and we decided to try to do a long distance thing so we just wrote a demo sent back and forth and then when I finally moved out here at the end of 2014 about a year later uh, we got some people together and just started playing shows Killer, killer. Um, I love the music on Detriment. It's definitely got like a hybrid to me of like old school. Uh, it's sort of me East meets West Coast hardcore, which I really love. Um, there's no fat on this record. All the songs are straight to the point, which I love personally. Um, uh, although I like other styles of music that are, you know, like to hang out for a while. I like my hardcore to be hard hitting and over quick. Like, let's get to the point. I love it. And um, yeah, it's very, uh, it's, you know, I think the, probably the vocals and the lyrics match the immediacy of the music. So I wanted to kind of, you know, start talking about the music there and sort of what your, uh, you know, inspirations are for that stuff. I mean, lyrically, I just kind of talk about, it's, it's hard because I, I get that it makes sense to go into a record with a theme for the whole thing. But for me, it's just whatever I'm thinking about at that time, whether it's a really personal issue or if it's the political climate. It's, so it's, it's kind of a mix of that. I can't say it's just one thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, um, no, of course, I didn't, uh, I didn't think that it was a theme uh, connecting the songs, but uh, I just like the fact that it's, you know, it seems like very, this very evenly matched through vocals to the songs and, uh, they, it works. Um, what a what a year we're living in. What a time to be in. And I, you know, I certainly hope that you and everybody in the band and your circle are okay and safe. Uh, I don't know if you're part of the protests out there. I live in Brooklyn. It's it's been a hot mess here for all my people. But generally, we're healthy and holding up well. I hope the same for you guys. You know, um, you know, it's tough to talk about music and art and stuff, but also like I worry about everybody. That's just my personality. I'm like, I don't want to be insensitive. Maybe make sure you're okay. And everybody is, nobody lost anybody. There's virus or a police baton, you know, horribleness going on in the world. Yeah, mm. it's, it's tough to manage that because, you know, obviously we want to promote this record we worked really hard on, but it's like the least of my worries at the time also. 
And then there are just so many things, not even just, you know, police brutality issues, which is a huge problem, but, you know, we still are dealing with like immigration and just like homelessness and people out of work. So it's, it's stressful for everybody. There's a lot going on. And I think it's just kind of have to like take a second <laughs> every once in a while breathe and then just like go on to the next thing. But, you know, I think it's important just to make sure that everything is still on the radar. I like to, I like to say sometimes that, uh, you know, if you're a person, if you're human, humaning in 2020, you're really going to learn to process and move on like never before. But I don't think we can afford to just move on anymore. I feel like things have hit a boiling point uh, sociopolitically and just emotionally. And then just the whole, you know, everything is just, you know, I, I like that people are staying focused and fierce. And um, I like that this movement is not going away. And it really is worldwide, which is insane to me, because I never, I always feel like America, we impose our views and our feelings on everyone else. And this is the first time in my whole life. And I don't know if you can relate. But this is the first time in my life that I feel like the rest of the world is reflecting back on us accurately what we are and do. Um, and, and there's things about America I love, like bands and hardcore and music and art. But, you know, there's it's just like, wow, you know, this is so much, so much to deal with. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely find right now that I, it's 100%, I'm just like, I, I can't allow myself to stop. Not that I ever stop caring about anything, but I can't allow myself at this point to not be active about it. It's just not an option. Right. And, you know, apropos of this, hardcore has always been, almost always has been in my life, at least about causes and important, like literally uh, as much as uh, hip hop has always been the CNN of the ghetto, as we used to say when I was a kid, I'm dating myself badly, but uh, hardcore is too. It always has been. And, um, and, that, and I'm sure, I know Pittsburgh has an awesome hardcore scene and always has actually. Uh, was that the only music you sort of were into or are into or are there other things that you enjoy that don't find their way into entry? Uh, I mean, I grew up, my dad was a music teacher. He liked every, I mean, his music taste right now is all of, across the board. But uh, I grew up actually a lot listening to country, which right now I'm like, more it's not something I have really stayed with the whole scene of country is doesn't quite vibe with me anymore but uh but I like all sorts of stuff I mean I like pretty much anyone into alternative music I feel has their you know soft bands and stuff like that so and one of my favorite bands has always been Pinback you know just for example like a band yes. like that so yeah great band um, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's great to hear about your, uh, your family history of music. That's so interesting. Um, you know, I just feel like, you know, everybody is very, so we're, we're, I feel like we're in the Spotify age or the Bandcamp age where nobody is very genre specific anymore, but I do love my hardcore and good hardcore bands. What were some of the first bands you got into that kind of inspired you to either just get into the music and then later become a vocalist? Uh, pro thinking back to high school, <laughs> early 2000s, um, like, one of the first bands I heard that, like, really changed things for me was Converge, because, I mean, still, they're at, there's, like, no, no one like them in a way, but uh, they kind of turned me on to really just fast, aggressive music, um, I definitely got more into kind of like metalcore and stuff as opposed to, you know, other people who kind of segue in through street punk and stuff like that. But, you know, I like Poison the Well and Martyr AD and stuff like that. Nice. I hear some of that in your vocals too. I hear, uh, you know, a really nice variety. Um, and I, I love uh, some of your uh, tones and timbers there. Uh, do remind me of Jacobs. That's really cool. Um, I, you can't see, I have a big Converge poster like over my shoulder off to the side. Um, and I love, love them forever. And, uh, and I actually just interviewed Jacob and he's really wonderful. Um, and even a little intimidating, but uh, he was great. We had a great interview and uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then, you know, I don't, what I like about hardcore is 
and very similar to its cousin in metal is like, you know, there's no boundaries, right? There's no, there doesn't have to be rules. I know there's a lot of elitist type fans, but people who make the music, there's no real rules or boundaries. So I always like to ask people like, what was, was there a song or like you said, you heard a lot of different music growing up, but what was like the first song you heard or the first singer you heard that was like, ah, oh, light bulb went off and I want to do, I want to do this now. Was there a moment like that? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I mean, just from the beginning of hearing music, I always wanted to, I mean, I really always wanted to do vocals in a band. And now I'm like, you know, in my 30s trying my hand at playing drums and bass and not very good at either. But that's like, that's the first thing I really wanted to do. Um, I, I don't think there's anything specific I can think of. It was just kind of as a whole. Nice. Uh, good luck with your drumming and your bass. Is that for a future project or just to write more songs for entry? I think for me, it's just, it gives uh, gives me a good idea of helping with writing songs. Um, like this last record, I feel like I, I felt competent enough to give my ideas like, hey, do this drum part or do this thing. And if I actually know how to play, I can show them what I mean instead of trying to bumble and terribly explain it nice there's a there's definitely a meme in there somewhere where the drummer is like every rehearsal ever somebody sings a drum beat to me and i'm just like and it's 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 pretty accurate <laughs> totally accurate yeah I've, I've, I've done it when i was in bands it's i feel i apologize now to any former drummer of mine watching this and um horrible but uh yeah man i really dig the band and um what a what a really good time to have this authentic real music right now because again you know i find all the drama and the turmoil it's the angrier music that comforts me the most it's just my weird thing i'm not uh you know even though i love a lot of chill stuff i'm not chilling at all right now i'm feeling very rageful and i need i need outlets like this album to get it out i definitely relate <laughs> for sure that's why it's uh, fun to do this kind of music. It's just, it's the time for it. And it's just a really good way to get angry for a little bit. I get to yell at people. Yes. <laughs> yell at a stick. It is. Um, beside obviously getting ready to release the record. And like you said, there's these other big world issues at, at bay right now. But what have you been doing in the meantime, these last you know little while while we've had the pandemic? I'm sure you were like the rest of us waiting for this thing to pass, have you been doing anything interesting to keep your mind and yourself sharp? <clears throat> um, I've been working every day. So, you know, that's still, still doing the same thing. I just have an office job, but uh, I've definitely been a little lazy here and there, just watching a lot of TV, but at, you know, trying to throw in also educational kinds of films and things like that. Um, just right i mean you, the past week and a half has just been i've just been like inundated with like information and just different ways to help and signing petitions and things like that which i should have been doing for a long time and just now so many things come to light so definitely as of right now for the past couple of weeks that's been a priority um overall though just sort of doing my few different hobbies like sometimes I paint for two days <laughs> sometimes I get into playing bass for a couple days and I just you know back and forth kind of have all over the place that's great um if you have any uh causes or orgs you want to shout out I'm happy to list them in the description here um I'm sure it's all the same ones we also champion but if you've got any particular ones I'm all ears we're all ears yeah, I mean, pretty much all the ones that are out there right now. Everyone I know, it seems to share pretty similar organizations and just trying to donate and get other people to do it. So that's what we need to do right now. Stay active. I'm trying to. I'm trying to listen as a, as a person that talks for a living at, at at a lot of points. I'm trying to listen as much as I can. And even though I've always felt like an ally, I always feel like there's more I can do and learn. And um, with my little corner of the internet world, I try to do what I can with those cults. It seems like all the a lot of bands are trying to do the same. And uh, and you know, in LA in particular, just has such a a weird dichotomy of rich and poor. And 
strong and struggling and you know it's always in my mind that like it's always kind of an epicenter of 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 you know these movements they always you know things happen i think um there's a, there's a, we can always do better and it's very inspiring i've seen a lot of footage of the la protests and for the most you know they've been overwhelming and great actually in my my estimate like it would be great if we didn't have to protest it'd be great if we lived in a perfect world but we don't so it's been great to see, you know, the LA folks out there every day, really strong and uh, united. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we went out last weekend. There were, I think, over 50,000 people in the middle of Los Angeles, in the middle of Hollywood, which was crazy. But unfortunately, it's going to have to keep happening. <laughs> No, I know we're going to have to stay focused on this, even though I know they're trying to quickly reopen the cities, which is also not a great idea. And um, New York City just started to open up this week, and I'm not, I'm on the fence about how smart that is. Not really smart, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, it is, it is very telling about the time we live in. And then we, we're not over this pandemic yet, and I worry about sort of the music scene in L.A., all these little clubs, and I'm sure you are a participant at a lot of the smaller venues, 1720, we are covered a lot of shows at, and other places, and I just saw some, I don't know if it was muckraking, I'm in the media, so I'm sensitive to, you know, clickbaity headlines, but uh, it was like 90% of venues may not come back due to COVID, and I was like, oh, I hope not, like, that's terrifying, and I, I always feel like there will be DIY spaces, there will always be community spaces for bands like yours, to be part of and hopefully for us to come hang out at and observe. So um, I don't know if uh, you're concerned about the future of gigs or the future of the scene with it, you know, and I don't think the economy is coming back anytime soon for the music business, right? We're, we're screwed pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely concerned. Mm -hmm. It's, and I think, you know, all the different venues here all cater to different kinds of music. So you're not going to go see the same bands at one DIY spot. Like we do need all of these venues. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I have no idea how long this thing is actually going to last and when music will be a priority again, because it's definitely seemingly last on the, on the list. Um, and I mean, everyone I know has had to cancel pretty much everything until at least next year. So it's scary. It is pretty scary. And uh, I know first world problems, there are much bigger things at play than if we're ever going to get to go to shows again, of course. But um, you know, it is, there's an entire, you know, whole economy based around going out and doing things and, and not just bands and not just journalists, but everybody, people at the, you know, who own the venues, staff, everything. So everybody's affected. We have our own little ecosystem in it. And uh, it does seem like it's going to take a long, a long time to get it back. But uh, so very strange. I mean, uh, awesome that you have this record coming out. A strange time in the world to have music come out. Um, I don't know if you guys have planned anything like online or via social media to kind of, you know, promote the record or just connect with fans, or you're just going to kind of hang back and see what happens because who knows, right? Nobody knows anything. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't really talked about something like that. I don't know if that's even within the comfort zone. <laughs> but uh, I mean, before we had planned to play shows for the record, which is appropriate. Uh, but now it's just that's not a possibility. I think more or less just kind of pushing it on social media. But I don't know. Think about it. I'm not 100% comfortable promoting myself. <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. Um, and it's understandable. It's just a tough time right now in the world. Um, I do think this is a great record and I would love everyone to hear it. I'm definitely going to tell all my hardcore and aggressive music loving friends to get with this record. Uh, it's coming out in July on again, Southern Lord, which usually anything on that label is strong. So, you know, I know it's hard and, and it's going to be, continue to be hard, but like nothing good is attained without struggle and hard work, at least from my experience. So uh, I like your perspective and uh, sorry, this is such a heavy interview, <laughs> such, a, okay. such a tough interview. I wish it could be all like unicorns and puppies. But, it's a heavy uh, time. It's, it's a heavy time. It's a very heavy time, but I'm glad we have this, again, this, I like the fight in this music. I really appreciate you and I appreciate the band and your performances and uh, 
you know, I wish you guys a lot of success and hopefully things clear up as we get later in the year and you get to have a proper release show or, you know, something. I appreciate it. Some, some kind of hangs. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again. We're here in Brooklyn. We go to a lot of shows. Maybe we'll catch up in person and celebrate. I'd love to make it back out there. Hopefully yeah. next year. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure we will. Um, thank you for the time. I appreciate your, you know, candor. And uh, we'll, we'll, I promise the next time we'll laugh and make jokes and we'll be hopefully a lot. We'll be further along in our, our success from our struggles and uh, our, our uh, protests will bear fruit. And I, I do feel like positive change is coming uh, for the first time, maybe in my whole life on these issues. I feel like there's a lot of good things that are going to come out of this, even though terrible things have happened as a result to get here. I do feel like we may get, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say reward is not the right word, but I think we're going to get uh, honored back for our fight. And yeah. I think that's really, that's the best we can hope for. And, um, but yeah, again, heavy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. And, and again, like what you said, I just, I think one thing that people need to acknowledge is that whatever work we're doing is not something we should expect to be thanked for either. No, <laughs> no there's no pants it's on the back. It's just necessary. Yeah, I, you know, I felt like that about Occupy Wall Street, that I felt like there was a congratulatory, self-congratulatory element, and I'm not denouncing that movement at all, but I just felt like it was over quick, and everybody was very satisfied with themselves, and I was like, we're still here, like, this is still, you know, we just got, you know, I know people are upset about property, if you're more upset about property and looting than human lives, you are the problem, not the solution, and uh, the looting that I'm most worried about is, you know, when the government gives away trillions of dollars to billionaires, and there's no plan to get that money back, but we, you know, hey, we'll give you some money to help live because there's been no economy, but uh, we'll expect it back someday. So, you know, people and their priorities, governments and their systems. Yeah, we gotta if I could, we gotta... I was going to say one very good example of this is I, I work next to Beverly Hills. I have to go through Beverly Hills every day. And when we mm. had curfews last week, there theirs was 1 p.m. Sure. <laughs> you know what right. that means, you know? Yeah. You're not leaving the house. They don't leave the compound. Uh, I get it. I've been out there. It's, uh, yep. it's a trip. It's a trip. Like I said, it's a big, it's a, New York is very similar, although we have a little, it's a little more grounded in reality than parts of California, but uh, I do love California and I love my California people. And uh, I hope you guys stay well and safe and strong and, uh, and hopefully no more earthquakes and fires this summer. Uh, Cause that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> the planet hates us and we hate ourselves so yay and uh again uh thanks for humoring me and uh, i appreciate you and again this band you guys rule and this record is fantastic and i'm gonna shout it from the mountains thank you so much i appreciate it thanks for your time sarah have a great day take care you too. Bye.